Today, Jesus wishes for you to accept the kingdom that I have bestowed upon you as a free gift from heaven. That which is righteous is my kingdom. My kingdom is filled with happiness. When I rule, there is tranquility. The presence of my presence in your life can be identified by these. The gift of heaven that I give you right now is those things, and they are your portion. There is no exclusion for you. There is no exclusion for you. But I have received you at the set time, washed and cleansed you, so that you may seat at my table. Others have tossed you out and kicked you to the curb, but I have received you. To accommodate you in the face of your adversaries, I have set up a table for you. Attend with a hunger. You need to come to me with a thirst, and I will satisfy you with my goodness and my favor at every possibility. Bring the pressure up to the peak. According to the Father, there is pressure, and I am aware of this fact. Continue to push through and push back. Refuse to accept the denial. Do not give in to the pressure that comes from the opinions of men, for they will never agree with the blessing that I have bestowed upon your life. Put yourself in the position of the woman who confronted me in the media about the matter of blood and refused to accept no as an acknowledgement. As soon as she made contact with the hem of my garment, she was freed from her affliction. A garment's hem is not the only thing I have for you, I have a lot more. My favor and anointing are being bestowed onto your life as I put a cloak over it. If you draw from the virtue that is already present within me, then you will be restored to completeness. At this moment, I am your completeness. I am the one who will save you. In order to receive, press in. Today, the Father states that I am transitioning you from a position of authority to one of authorization. The requisition orders of heaven have been signed, and the path has been paved for you to ascend to a more elevated position in the sequence of events that have been predetermined. I am in possession of a strategy and a goal that will not be disregarded. For the same reason that I will not be refused, you will not be denied either. You cannot be excluded by the adversary. Despite the fact that accusations and claims are being made against you, I am the one and only great advocate who can wash and cleanse you of any stain without exception. There will be nothing that can separate you from my love. The absence of life, death, of things in the present, or things in the past. During the sacrifice that took place at Calvary, everything was taken care of and paid for. The scepter that belonged to my father was presented to me when I ascended from the dead and led those who were held captive at the time. It was safe to say that I held the keys to death, hell, and the grave under my control. What was made available to me, I freely distributed to the apostles, and I commanded them to spread the gospel throughout the entire world. As of right now, that authority is still in existence. Give in to it. In addition, I have never retracted those words, nor have I ever revoked the authorization of heaven that was behind me when I made those statements. Let us take possession of the keys to death, hell, and the grave now. As I release those who have been held hostage, I urge you to make it your mission to go out into the world and release those who have been held captive, to uncover the graves and to depopulate hell so that paradise can receive those who have recently been pardoned. You shouldn't wait for males to give you permission. Your phone has been rung. Because I have given you permission, all of the power that is necessary to make a change is now converging within you and all around you. Step into the place where blessings are bestowed, the Father advises today. As you are familiar with the experience of failing and falling short, you should now give yourself permission to get acquainted with favor, benefit, and blessing. I am doing something new in the earth, declares the Father. This is something that I am doing. I have no intention of putting you in a state of hopelessness, discouragement, or despair. I have no intention of putting you under. From the very beginning of the planet, there was a legacy that was intended for you to inherit. Even before Adam opened his eyes and rose from the dust, 
each and every one of your days was already written in my book. During the time that I was casting the stars in the heavens as a testimony of my benevolence and my love for you, you were among the sons of God who sang for delight. In the beginning, before the world was ever conceived, you were holy and blameless before me in love. You have always been this way, and you continue to be this way. Each and every other viewpoint does not originate from within my own head. I pray that this one tremendous truth finds its way into your heart. The thoughts that I have for you are not a secret to me. To provide you with a sense of hope and a future, thoughts that are not of evil but of good. That you may have a life that is worth living. Your tent is being expanded, and the stakes that hold it up are being strengthened. I am also growing you in accordance with the expansion of God. Expanding and promoting you is what I am doing. Continue along the path that I have designated. Refuse to let yourself become engrossed in the thoughts or mindsets of earthly things. Be purified of tainted thoughts and decisions that are contrary to God's will. In no circumstances should you give in to the spirit of the world, which would ultimately lead to your demise. Both the appearance and the sensation of disobedience are familiar to you. Do not travel to that location. Refuse to stray from the path that I have laid out for you. Repent as soon as possible if you discover that you have strayed from the path. Make sure that you do not let anything or anyone prevent you from reaching the place of blessing that I have designated for you on this day as your special part. Today, the Father instructs us to move forward from the past and into the future that I have planned for you personally. According to the Father, I have a lot of wonderful and powerful things that I wish to accomplish in this world. Nevertheless, I require a people who are ready, obedient, and modest. Pride is looking inward. To be humble is to lean forward. It is important to avoid dwelling on the past or allowing yourself to yearn for times that have passed. There are things that I have in store for you that will make the most significant achievements you have achieved in the past seem insignificant in comparison to what I will accomplish in you and through you in the future. Today, I have a plan for you that I have sketched out. There is a way that I have mapped out for you, and it does not lead you into the pitch black. At this moment, you are entering a more favorable day. The mercies that I have for you are refreshed each morning, and the opportunities that life has to offer are laid out in front of you like an uninhabited roadway. You have been led to believe that your better days are behind you and that you will never achieve the same level of success again. This is a lie that has been told to you by life and circumstances. In this way, the perspective of unregenerate thinking is tainted by contamination. The mind of Christ should be put on. Your eyes will be able to see what I have in store for you if you allow my mind to become your mind. At this very now, by virtue of your own free will, beloved, you must reject all of this corrupted thinking. The situation cannot be reversed. Let go of it. It is time to let go of the past and stop lamenting the fading glory of the accomplishments done in the past. Take a look up. Give yourself a good shake, and keep your eyes peeled for the day that I have promised, which is coming with a bright and fresh promise. In this day and age, the Father invites you to let my serenity to envelop you. As the Prince of Peace, I am here. In the moment that you allow yourself to become at peace with me, you are encircling yourself with my favor and my kindness. You are able to maintain your composure in the midst of every storm because my peace is the arbitrator. Righteousness, joy, and peace are the hallmarks of my reign. My kingdom is not merely a source of peace, rather, it is peace itself. Permit my peace to serve as the border that you will not cross for any cause, including but not limited to. What would be the point of you ever leaving the peace that I have provided for you, when my peace is the hug that I use to hold you and maintain you? Defy the temptation to be enticed away from the tranquil setting. Today, make it your goal to be established, firm, and secure, ensconced in a place of serenity, 
where nothing and no one can disturb your undisturbed composure. Make this your determination. During the following days, there will be others who will be able to perceive the profound tranquility and calm that I hold you in, and they will make an effort to upset you and divert your attention away from you. Do not take your eyes off of me. I adore them. Encourage them with words of tranquility. Should you find that the tranquility that I have bestowed upon you has returned to you, then you should shake the dust off your feet and continue moving forward. The serpent consumes dust as its diet. Your walk should not be influenced by the spirit of the flesh that is acting in the lives of others around you who are not enlightened. Stop what you're doing and keep going forward in my peace. Because the only story that those who are in darkness are willing to accept is the narrative of the negative, they will not comprehend, and you will never be able to communicate in any way to them. I have not phoned you in order to be pessimistic. The reason I called you is not to ring the bell of an alarmist mentality when I phoned you. You need only look for me in the bow of your boat when you are confronted with a challenge or a threat, and then you can join me in the spot where there is calm and rest. There will be a calm after the storm. You will arrive at the land unexpectedly, and everything will be well. In today's message, the Father announces that the door is open and not closed. The Father adds, I have opened the door for people. I have made it possible for you to participate in my mercy. Your heart's door should be opened, and you should let my mercy win to start blowing. The windows of your mind should be opened. Launch yourself into the heart's door. I will blow away all the dust of remorse and shame, oh my darling, if you allow each and every door, including those of the past, to be open for me. I urge you to have an open mind. You believe that I would not be interested in seeing those items that you have concealed, but I have already seen them. As soon as I saw them, I started bleeding. As soon as I saw them, I passed away. I was able to see them and rise from the dead in order to liberate you from the hiding shame you have. This day, I would like to tell you, be free, says the Father. Enjoy your freedom. Even on this day, I want you to place yourself on the altar and let the aroma of my mercy to permeate your home. According to the Father, you will no longer be managed by your senses. I free you from the never-ending search for the exceptional on this very day. According to the Father, I have not called you to the extraordinary. It is I who has summoned you to my altar. Your salvation is not in the shout, rather, it is in me that you will find salvation. Wait for me in silence, and I will come. It will not be the fanfare of man or the performing spirit of man that will captivate your attention when you hear my sound. Rather, it will be my sound. Because you will be caught up in my splendor, men will not be able to divert your attention. It is the altar of marriage that I invite you to come to. This is the place where the graves are opened, and the deceased speak to those who are still alive about the aspects of life that death cannot eradicate. The Father commands you to come forth. Come forth and listen to my speech, and as my voice communicates to the hearts of men, your heart will respond to what comes from my voice. On this day and age, the Father declared, I call forth my apostles in the earth. Have you given any thought to the possibility of translation functioning as a mode? The Father states that you will go forth among the countries, and when you do so, they will ask you to, let me see your passport, since they will not have any record of you entering their borders. They will challenge you by saying, show me your plane ticket, for they will be unaware of the fact that I brought you into their nation by my glory in order to confront and confuse them, and to declare my glory to a people who are in darkness. France is going to witness my splendor. My splendor will be seen in London. My greatness will be experienced by Syria, Iraq, and Iran. From the city of Zion, I will send forth deliverers. I will show them my splendor, and they will ask, what must we do in order to be saved? Wait for it. 
Put your sandals on your feet and hold your staff in your hand, because the moment has come for you to remain standing. The Father declares, I am bringing a shaking into the earth. It was not a shaking that caused destruction, rather, it was a shaking that caused shackles to fall off and doors to open in the facilities. My intention is to open the prisons. No man will be able to hold you captive. You are not going to be confined by bars. It is impossible for even the dead to contain you, my people, since I am calling you forth. As a result of the ram's horn being placed in front of the mouth of my holy angel, the prison houses will quake, and my holy ones will emerge from their confinement. All of man's temples are going to be smashed and brought to their knees. The Father declares that my light will shine with great brilliance from the dark recesses of the earth, in order to make known my salvation in the earth. Today, the Father declares, I am bringing recovery into the land through my actions. In the words of the Father, I am recovering the land. It is I who is reclaiming the territory in your life that man has appropriated for his own purposes. Please make your way into the territory that I have reclaimed for you. Come and construct your home in that location. In the new location that I have provided for you, I invite you to come forward and construct your goals and dreams. It was not man who did this. The earth's princes did not engage in this behavior. My hand is responsible for everything that has been accomplished, and it is also responsible for making sure that my promise is kept to you. In my hands, you are safe and sound. Walls will not protect you from harm. You will not be protected by arms. I will ensure your safety. In addition to being a wall of fire surrounding you, I shall also be a fire within your midst. Because I am the only one to whom you will give glory, your Father says, you will give the glory to me. According to the Father, we are currently in the early stages of an apostolic recovery. The ministers of the gospel are making their way to the earth. Those who have been ordained, summoned, and sent by me are making their way into the earth. The great and forthcoming day of the Lord is drawing near, and would I not be able to present my truth in the earth once more with the authority of the apostles? When I come, will I not bring signs, miracles, and wonders with me? What if I am not known by my name, which is Yah? I will be recognized by the name Yah, which is my name. I am coming, and the phrase, King of Kings, is written on the thigh of my body. Come out, you who are my apostles. Arise, my holy apostles, and come forth. It is not the nations that you belong to, rather, it is I who owns you. You are a part of me and I will send you to the countries of the world. It is possible for you to cross borders and boundaries without suffering any harm. It is important that you do not forget the sacrifice that was made in your name, the Father says today. It is important to keep in mind that the only place where saving grace may be found is in the labors of the cross, and not in the labors of man. Do you recall the very first time that I had an impact on your life? When you were in that moment, you were able to experience incredible grace, and I pulled you out of many waters. It was not any other resource of any kind but rather my incredible grace. Beloved, you must stop seeking. Always, I am in the lead. You were drawn by me. Nobody came up with the idea. There is no way for a man to approach the Father unless the Spirit draws him. You were drawn by me. I am attracting you, and I am retaining you in my presence. I will not let go of you, and I will continue to bring you closer. No, it is not up to you, rather, it is up to me. The responsibility lies with me. In this day and age, I accept responsibility for you. I shall take you beyond the border of the veil. The Father invites you to come. Make your way beyond the veil. Proceed past the veil and into the realm of eternity. I invite you to enter the space that I have planned for you. This is the time for you. The time has come for you. 
Let go of your hands and let your heart to open. Now is the moment to act. It is time to act now. The past is no longer relevant. I hold the present with my other hand. You must cast yourself aside and give yourself over to what I have in store for you today. Make the courageous step of faith that will lead you beyond the anguish and suffering, as well as the rejection of men. Do what I have commanded you to do. I have called you to be what you are. You are familiar to me. I am aware of your name, including the one that is kept a secret from everyone else. To step beyond the veil and into the area that I have prepared for you, I am calling you by that name at this very now. The Father asks you to ascend to a higher level today. The Father invites you to come. Send your offerings and oblations to the place where you are. Come with the sin sacrifice that I have made, since there is no other substance that can cleanse you. For the full and complete expiation of every transgression, you should leave all of the offerings that are associated with Cain behind and allow your contribution to be the return of the blood that was shed at Calvary. It is now safe to use you. At this point, you are complete. Currently, the new has surpassed the old. As a result of the newness that I have brought forth in you, the perverted entity has been consumed. Yes, you are clean. Today, my light is shining brightly for you. In spite of the darkest and most inaccessible parts of your history, my light is blazing brightly. Everything has been thoroughly cleaned. According to me, you are clean. You are welcome to come in. You are now free to enter. At this time, you are free to come forward and place the entirety of your burnt offering on the altar. At this moment, I shall be the recipient of the fragrant aroma of your life, which will be completely devoured by the flames of my altars. It is now the time of your jubilee celebration. Now is the time to step out into the world. Each and every loan is paid off. All commitments have been relinquished. Your only obligation, according to the Father, is to love. You owe nothing else. The Father asks his children, what will you repay me? How will you compensate me, because I am the owner of everything? Not only is the earth mine, but so are the people on it. You belong to him. Your affection is the only form of payment that I will accept. My kingdom is a place where your love is the currency of the realm. I ask that you accept my love and give it back to me on this day. If you want to return your love to me in heaven, you must also return it to me on earth. I have engraved the words, Amazing Grace, and, Freely Forgiven, on the coin that represents my love. This is relevant to you. As a result of the blood that was shed at Calvary, it is your responsibility. The grief, the anguish, and the pain were all alleviated by Calvary. Refuse to feel sorry. Turn down the rejection. Reject the rejection by saying, I am forgiven. I have been accepted. All that I require is found in you, and in that acceptance, which comes through you and in you, the Father adds, you are accepted in its whole and without condition. What does the Father have to say to you today? Would you like to travel to the mountain of the Lord? Are you willing to give up the refreshment that comes from earthly things and enter the region that is lacking in moisture and the place that is bright with sunlight, the Zion of God? It is not possible to find angels who are present at the wells of man's learning. The wells of man are not attended to by clouds during the day or by fire during the night, yet, on my holy mountain, my brightness is so great that it overshadows everything. I invite you to enter my mountain, my darling. On my mountain, there is peace, joy, and the fullness of bread. In my mountain, there is completeness. Fear mongers will not be able to reside there. There will be no hateful person living there. You are going to be able to touch my face there in my mountain. In that location, all those who have a thirst for live waters will be able to taste them and no longer have a thirst for them. 
I invite you to enter my mountain, my darling. The plains of Sodom and the sameness should be abandoned. I will overshadow you if you leave the plains of man's conveniences and comforts and come to the cleft of the rock where I shall be waiting for you. Beloved, please touch my face. I want you to touch my hands. I want you to touch my feet. Please take a look at the wounds that I have sustained as a result of all of your wrongdoings and the indignities that you have committed. Use the tears of your love to wash my feet, since that is where I shall be waiting to greet you. Neither blame nor condemnation will be found at that very place. There, you will experience love and life for the rest of your life. My holy mountain is the only place where one can find an overshadowing of grandeur, there is no other place like as this. Arrive. I urge you to come with me. Go to a higher level. When you are in lofty places, allow your feet to be like hind's feet. As you draw yourself higher and higher, allow your hands to grab hold of the rough crags at your feet. You should feel the angels who are attending you surrounding you and lifting you up. You are not going to fall. You are not going to fail. Arrive. Step forward and get to a higher level. Exactly for this purpose, you were created. This is the purpose for which you were formed. Today, the Father tells you that the time for your blessing has arrived. No longer are you required to continue reciting those same prayers over and over again. There are some prayers that are answered successfully, and the only thing that remains is to wait for the response. It is the Father who declares, I am faithful to answer. You have been heard at the time that was scheduled. You have inquired of me on multiple occasions, and there is no need for you to continue to inquire. Are you aware that there is a period in time when the ability to get paradise is in your possession, and all you need to do is take a moment to catch your breath because the answer is going to materialize front of you? There are instances like these, for sure. Rejoice, because the answer is not only on its way, it is now close at hand, and it is even right at the door. My faithfulness is something to rejoice in, declares the Father. Exult in the completeness of me. As a God who makes complete promises, it is precisely the fulfillment of those promises that is taking place in your life at this very moment. I am Jehovah Jireh, and I am the ram that becomes stuck in the thicket by accident. I am the source of all of your answers. Every single inquiry and requirement. I hear every scream that comes from your heart. Not only am I not ignoring you, but I am also not standing by and watching you suffer. I am right here among you. There is no way that I will ever abandon or abandon you. Never in my life will I turn my favor away from you. The Father commands you to come to me. No more playing hide and seek. Come to me and take in everything that I have in store for you. You can find rest in my bosom and you will witness my faithfulness reshape and remold your life in accordance with my purpose.